So I should just explain it. I will just make it like that, that my colleague is going to be my assistant, assistant or my training person. Okay. So just go on the other side. The first sensor goes on the upper arm of the more affected side after stroke or other neurological impairments. It's as well useful for every time that the hand or that the arm function is limited. The second arm, uh, the sensor goes on the wrist, and the third sensor, with the main sensor, it's the main sensor unit. It has as well a fourth sensor inside, which enables us to uh, measure the interaction between the more and the less affected arm while by manual training. So we'll try by manual training now. The attachment and detachment of the applicables is very easy, so like that. The patient is go holding the device with both arms and is going to play virtual reality games. So let's make the setting. We are choosing the bimanual training in a different plane. It can be vertical, horizontal, on a support surface, uh, on a support sphere for wrist training, or we can train just the separate joints of the arm. So just the shoulder, just the elbow, or just the wrist. We are now going to try vertical plane training. And we have two type of games. The assessment games, where we're measuring different aspects of the movement, and the training games, where we don't measure that many aspects, where we are training activities of daily living. So let's try one of the assessment games. For instance, Labyrinth. Here I put just go one step back that you're not going to hit yourself exactly like that i put you in the central position and you just go get the green point go to the other side of the labyrinth without touching the walls and getting the green point if the patient is going to do more work with the one or the other arm there are bars if the patient is doing more work with the affected arm here a green bar shows and if the patient is doing more work with the healthy arm a red bar it shows. Up. Up. And we can see how well the patient's doing. We are having here the real time assessment data for performance of the melody, velocity, deviation, smoothness, support, and the moving time. And everything goes into the way into the movement quality index, which is a weighted average of these aspects. It goes from zero, no movement, till ten a perfect movement. So my colleague has still some room for improvement with 8.1. Where did the technology come from? We are a Slovenian-based company, and uh, the technology was uh, developed within the laboratory for robotics at the, uh, at the Faculty for Electrical Engineering at the University of Ljubljana. Actually, the inventor of the device was one of the main engineers while developing Hokoma's um, robotic device, Armeo Power. And then he said, well, let's make a device that is much more affordable, much more easy to produce and bring it to the patient at home. So he can do it as well at home. So the vision of our company is to develop this device for home use. Having a few hundred euro worth device that the patient after being discharged from the clinic can use at home in the comfort of their own living room and are going to train and still the physician or the therapist can still see what the patient's doing and how he's improving. How do you see the future of this technology? Yes, the future is going to the home market. So being there for the whole time of the rehabilitation process from the clinic in the clinic. This is the clinical version and then as well at home. Uh, how do you think this uh, technology can change the life of the patient in the future? This technology can improve the outcome of the rehabilitation process, meaning the patient has more function in their arms and therefore have a more normal life after stroke or other neurological impairments. Thank you very much. You're welcome.